Here are 51 advanced quick tips that will surely make you a better Helldiver. Rail Cannon Strikes can one-hit every enemy in the game, except Bile Titans, but a couple of well-landed nades after a Rail Cannon Strike can easily finish off the job. Aiming in first person not only is more accurate, but also reduces recoil dramatically. You may know by now that drop pods can be very useful against taking out big units such as Chargers and Hulks, but what you'll also want to pay attention to is landing on the right spots. Try to land on the Bio Titan's face to either one-shot them or weaken down their face's health dramatically to more easily explode it, and try to land on tanks' heat sink and you will one-shot these units. When dealing with Bio Titans and Chargers, they'll very notably have very different health pools for each different limb, head, as well as their butts. So prioritize your fire on the same body part and do not split your shots across different body parts or else you'll just be wasting precious ammo and time. Diving or going prone increases explosive resistance by a lot, something like 75% explosion resistance, which should be always used when near an explosion. On the other hand, sprinting increases the amount of damage you take from an explosion, so make sure you lie down when shit's about to go down. Auto cannons can one-hit factories in their little vents, just make sure you're not shooting at it from an angle that will make it ricochet elsewhere. And it can also one-hit bug holes from afar as well. Illegal broadcasts can be destroyed from far away without actually having to do the terminal. Usually, I just throw an impact grenade at it and the job is done. Patrol spawn rates do not increase by the game's timer, they increase by doing primary objectives and clearing out nests. It does get a little bit more complicated than that, but these are the biggest takeaways in my opinion. There is something that these researchers refer to as heat generation, which I won't go over in this video, as it can get a little bit more complicated. Instead, I'll link in the description section below the Reddit post that explains how patrol spawn rates work extensively. So all credit goes to these guys. The biggest powerful key takeaway to take from learning how patrols work is that you should almost definitely ignore all bug nests and automaton fabricators as you'll only make your life harder the more you get rid of them. Unless your intentions is to make your game slightly harder or to gain a little bit more chips and XP or if you're doing the blitz missions, then there's no reason to ever get rid of the bug nests and factories. Container doors can be opened pretty much by anything explosive, as well as the AMR, the arc thrower, and even the slugger shotgun. Hell bombs are scattered around the map and have a very large radius, being able to take down a bio titan even if they're not necessarily on top of it. So save these for groups of chargers or bio titans. CF artillery doesn't tell you which one of the missiles is coming up next, however, keep in mind that the order at which you load the CF artillery will be the order that they will be shot, so keep that in mind. You can juggle the CF artillery missiles by pressing E to drop the missile missile while holding the sprint button, then quickly pressing E again to pick it back up after a short sprint, saving you several seconds. Another CF artillery tip is to accumulate all five missiles first before toggling the terminal, as toggling the terminal will attract a group of bugs or automatons right towards the terminal's location. The radar station is the most important side objective to do in the game as it will display the entire map for you enabling you to either avoid points of interest and their static enemies, as well as enabling you to pick and choose how you'll want to play your game. These radar stations can be very easily spotted, as they will be the tallest towers in most maps, accompanied by a small black satellite on it. Always do these as soon as you can. Also, it's worth noting that the radar station does have a very distinct look on the minimap. It will look something like this, no matter which map you're playing. Stims will turn you near immune. When under the effect of a stim, you survive a charger's charge, heavy gunfire, fire, and essentially just about anything that's not a one-hit mechanic. Now, we're all familiar with injuries, but what do they really do? Injuries to the arm will affect accuracy, and injuries to the right arm specifically will affect grenade as well as stratagem uses. Leg injuries will slow you down and disable you from sprinting, and chest injuries will cause you to bleed up until you die or when you use a stem. Stealth is indeed a real thing in Helldivers 2, and once you understand how patrols pathing works, you can more easily make your ways around enemies, as patrols will walk in a linear path. Also, 
you can bait enemies into investigating a noise by using stratagems as well as grenades. You don't need to extract to win the mission, gain experience, requisition chips, medals, or super credits. The only reason you'll ever care about extracting is to take samples, so if you don't need any more samples, then realistically, you don't really need to extract anymore either. If you call in for an extraction solo, you'll be forced to stay within the area, which will very quickly get overwhelmed by various different groups of patrols. However, if you run down the map's timer, the extraction will be called in automatically and you don't need to stay near the extraction zone. Matter of fact, if you're far away from the extraction zone when it gets called in, no patrols will actually go to the extraction zone making it have zero enemies in the zone when you make your way back to the ship. If you call in for the extraction, as the ship is about to land, you can step out of the area and that will force the Pelican 1 to stay hovering over the extraction zone, shooting down anything it sees, killing a lot of enemies from very very far away. If you've got a lot of samples and you call in an extraction, drop your samples by pressing X on the computer right where the Pelican 1 will land. And now, you can rest easy knowing that even if you die in a really awkward place, the sample will be there for you or your teammates to pick up as they enter the Pelican 1. Depressive fire on automatons actually make their aim worse, even though they seem to have perfect accuracy with their rockets when facing me. Ego rocket pods, even though not that great against bugs, can and will one-hit all tanks as well as towers against the automatons and can deal with a lot of the objectives, making it the easiest way to consistently deal with tanks. If you've got nothing to deal with a Hulk, a few impact grenades in between its legs will take down the heatsink behind it. I probably wouldn't generally recommend this, but it can save your life and get rid of an already weak Hulk. The anti-material rifle can too hit a Hulk, and no scope in the rifle is actually extremely accurate. It just doesn't show you your crosshair. If you have one of those monitors that has an input crosshair, the AMR becomes much more easy to use than actually scoping in. Learn your priorities when dealing with large groups of enemies, but generally, this is how it goes. For Terminids, deal with the Hunters first, then the Chargers, then Bio Titans, Brute Commanders, and then the rest. For Automatons, it's a bit harder to prioritize as it will heavily depend on how much cover you have. But generally, prioritize the Hulks first as they're the most deadly and will charge directly at you, then deal with the Rocket Devastators, then the rest will depend heavily on the situation. The Stun Grenade can stun a Bio Titan, enabling you to land a very easy 500 kilo bomb or an Orbital Precision Strike right underneath it. Bio Spewers will die to one impact grenade as long as it lands anywhere near them, for some reason, this can't be replicated as easily with the other grenade types. Stop Bio Titans in their tracks by playing footsie with them. By getting near a Bio Titan, it will make them stop in their tracks and either try to stomp you or to spew bile at you, which you can very easily avoid by diving, so do this to land your 500 kilos as well as orbital precision strikes. When firing at armored targets, sometimes it's not clear whether you're actually damaging them or not, but one huge visual cue is when you actually effectively damage an armored unit, for example the Hulk, it will fire a red spark when you're hurting it, and it will not fire any sparks at all or blue sparks when you are not hurting it. For example, here against the Bio Titans, notice how there are blue sparks coming out of it when we're using a weapon that can't damage it. Regular Spore Spewers have no armor and can be destroyed by nearly every weapon across the entire map, so no need to expose yourself. Also, there's usually a lot of samples underneath this Spore Spewer. Detector towers from the Automaton side, even though they are very annoying, can be easily dealt with a 500 kilo bomb without actually needing to engage with many enemies as you can just toss a 500 kilo and run away from the reinforcements it will surely call in. Eagle stratagems will always fly perpendicular to your throws, meaning if you throw an eagle strike while looking at the north side of the map, the eagle stratagem will hit from either the east to the west side or from the west to the east side. It will never fly in the same direction that you threw it at. When going up against automatons, be careful with the little guys when you start an engagement, as they're the only ones that can call for reinforcements. There's a specific unit type that can call for it, but to keep it simple, 
get rid of the little guys if you're trying to avoid further reinforcement. Automaton reinforcements can be one shot by expendable anti-tanks as well as recoilless rifles. With a full team, you can effectively disable all reinforcements if everybody's bringing in the proper equipment. Flamethrowers can get rid of chargers by focusing down their legs for about a quarter to a half tank, which is more than enough to kill a charger. Smokes will block enemy sight, and as far as they're concerned, you're exactly where you were before the smoke landed. Meaning, automatons will shoot at where they saw you last, and chargers and spewers will also directly attack where they saw you last. Until they realize, of course, you're no longer there when they move past the smoke. Following up on the smoke tip, the enemies don't magically know where you are. Wherever they saw you last is where they will look for you, so when running away from enemies, if you get behind a hill or a forest, you can just cut to the left or to the right and you will very quickly escape the enemy group. If you just keep running forward, they'll just continue to spot you again and again and permanently chase you down. There is a specific timer in between each reinforcement call from the bugs and automatons. When you first enter the game, the very first group you face will call on for reinforcements, and after doing so, it will set a certain cooldown before they can call for reinforcements again. It's not about the amount of enemies or amount of different groups, and rather, just a timer. Which is why a lot of people get stuck in infinite reinforcement loops, which will happen when they take too long to deal with the enemies, and essentially enabling the enemy's reinforcement cooldown to keep refreshing before the player manages to clear out all the enemies. Tactically retreating is my most powerful tool for completing all my solo Helldiver missions, so with that said, retreat relentlessly. Keep your distance from bugs and constantly retreat from overwhelming automaton forces. Don't be scared of bumping into static groups if it's the only direction you can go, with the exception of nests and factories of course, as static groups will oftentimes only have about a couple of enemies. What's most important is dealing with the breaches and reinforcements quickly if you're trying to play aggressive. Bumping into another group will not make them call for another reinforcement, however, taking a long time to deal with a group will. The shield generator pack can block one full hit, meaning you can essentially survive one full 500 kilo bomb explosion if necessary, so keep that in mind when using the shield generator. You can set the railgun to unsafe mode, but that's not the tip. After setting the railgun to unsafe mode, the railgun will do its maximum damage at around 90% charge power and above, which you can see from the top red marker on the railgun in first person, but most importantly, the railgun has a very subtle sound effect when it reaches that 90% mark. So pick up a railgun and pay attention to it and you'll quickly get used to the sound of it once you cross that 90%. Diving is extremely powerful. It makes automatons miss their shots, you can more easily dodge hunters, you can put out fires, and overall, spam and dive while you're being overwhelmed will be absolute key to your survival. The more you dive, the more you realize how insanely powerful this seemingly pointless dodge actually really is. If you reload your weapon before it's completely empty, it will reload faster than if it were empty. The same applies to the autocannon, which can oftentimes save your life for not having to waste so much time reloading. Speaking on reloading, shell reload based shotguns such as the Punisher and the Slugger can essentially have infinite ammo if you're constantly reloading as you can essentially reload in between each pump. The new enemy Shriekers, they can't hit you if you're prone or if you're sprinting away from them when they're coming up from behind you. Tesla Towers can't hit you if you're prone either, so you can prone right underneath it firing at enemies and you're good to go. Enemies despawn if you put enough distance between yourself and them. So if enemies are overwhelming on an objective due to a lot of bug breaches or reinforcements, just run really far away and the enemies will despawn, leaving the objective completely empty. To handle multiple chargers and effectively deal with all of them, charge at them rather than running away and strafe to the sides. This will make it so that they almost will never hit you and it will open up a window for you to take them out. You will, however, have to balance that out with whatever is standing behind that charger. The arc thrower does not need to fully charge after the first shot, you only need to charge about 60% of the way through, enabling you to fire very quick shots, quickly dealing with large swarms. If you sprint or get hit, 
or stop firing altogether, you will need to fire a full charge shot again however. You will get used to this the more you use this weapon. So that's it for the 51 advanced tips I grouped together for you guys. Realistically this list could have gone on for much longer as every little aspect of this game has some interesting tips that can be tied along with it. But hopefully this has been useful to you guys. Let me know in the comment section below if there were many of these you did not know or how many you knew. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Peace.